So just like we were dealing with simulated annealing, we can also use something known as a genetic algorithm. And the entire idea is, again, we're thinking about this as something known as a biologically inspired algorithm or AI. You know, the, it, the important part, it, algorithm, rhythm, is that it's biologically inspired. If we take the idea of evolution for a moment, right? Evolution is this concept where it's survival of the fittest, whoever has the best genes gets to live on uh, into the next sort of generation and create children. And then those, whoever's the survival of the fittest of those gets to move on. And so they may, we may be able to find our configuration. Remember again, the configuration is our goal. configuration as our main goal and bypassing those local maximas. So what we're looking at here is again trying to find some potential state that we're working off of. And we'll, we'll start to dig a little deeper into these but just to kind of get everyone excited about them there is a, a link that I will be posted in the you know, description below, but I always like to sort of recommend taking a look at this one uh, just to pull it up for a second. And the entire idea is, well, we happen to have a car that is just, well, it got stuck and died. And so someone else is coming along, it, not as big, but it didn't make it. But notice the big point here was we're now in generation, oh, we're still in the same generation. We're in generation two. And what happened in generation one, whoever got the farthest was the survivor. They got to move on and create the next generation. And you can start to see as these are going on, they all start to mirror that first one ever so slightly. Big old wheels, uh, sort of a bigger body, but sort of clunky at the same time. And again, you are welcome to have this running uh, for like an hour. And you'll see, you know, you'll get some really nice results. This one almost made it. Anyways, back to our learning how to do this part. So the way that you could think about this, right, is if we're dealing with sort of that same kind of concept, we could look at that car design as having some different chromosomes, right, or genes going on there. Those wheels, for example, we might be wanting to say, oh, well, we're going to control the wheels and, you know, the, the, the wheels are now a variable that we're working off of. There's also some distances between the center and the edge pieces. So that's something we might want to con control. And there may be some distances between the corner pieces. Again, just sort of working off of this little toy example here. And if we were to assign a value to each one of these, Again, what we could generate out is something called a population. Big old fancy $5 word there. But it's just here we take all of the possible candidates that we're working off of and we just assign them their values. When we're looking at any individual in that population, we start to sort of refer to the configuration of that person as a chromosome. And then when we're looking at, say, the individual elements or numerical values, uh, we start to refer to them as genes. Again, we're just sort of finding similarities and using terms that are similar from evolution into our sort of biologically inspired meta heuristic algorithm. Yeah. So again, we take these, we can assign them some type of F score, some type of fitness. Now, if we're working off of the game, you know, the fitness value was how far uh, the cars were able to travel or something like that. I'm arbitrarily just giving them some numbers so that they have numbers attached to them so we can decide who's better and who's worse. And so, again, if you're starting to look at that, all right, well, I had my uh, five cars, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, they all got generated onto that track. Uh, and here's how far each one was able to make it. Well, again, now we look at the idea of evolution saying survival of the fittest. Who was the best? And what we can do is we can say, well, those top performers, they get to make the next generation. They get to make the, can the, the, the offspring uh, for the next generation's population. But that's only one approach, right? Uh, that's only focusing on top performers. You may not want 
top performers, or you may want just one of the top performers, right? Maybe instead, I'm saying 20 here, but it could have been uh, 23. Again, what we're just looking at is a top, a top performer and some random person. Again, that's just your how you select your uh, next, who, who your parents are effectively. And so here's the talk. You see, uh, when one car and another car love each other very much, they may have a crossover point. And what that is, is essentially when we're dealing with the idea of, well, now that I have a top performer and someone, I have two uh, potential candidates of generating the next, pa uh, the next population, how do I make their offspring? So with the crossover point, that's effectively deciding wh which genes come from which parent. And so if I thought about something as just having a crossover point of two, as my example, right, working off of A3 and A4 as my, my parents, two of the genes, the first two genes, come from A3. You can see that, again, here's two, here's four, those came from A3. But again, since that's the crossover point, now everything else is coming from A4. And so we do see some slight changes. Now again, you can see A4 had a seven in its first gene. Maybe the, again, we can treat that like it's one of the wheel sizes. Well, again, you look like your father if my cars had whatever. Uh, my point being here is, again, maybe now that big wheel that uh, A4 had, well, A3 didn't have it, so it shrunk. And you can see that that's just how we can generate all of our possible offsprings. In this case, uh, instead of it being a crossover point of two, just working off of a crossover point of five, how you generate out this number Random, you can generate it as a random approach. You could have crossover points of all of them. My point being is, you know, again, we're just trying to generate out the next population, which means that it's perfectly fine that we have twins. It's actually perfectly fine that some of the cars do not survive. They're invalid configurations for whatever reason, whatever your problem happens to be working off of. Again, we only care about sort of survival of the fittest. But there's one last little piece that we need to deal with, and that's the idea of something known as the mutation. Now, again, this was a crossover point where we're dealing with a crossover of a four this time, but at position seven, so at this index, I think this is seven, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, at index seven, or at position seven, or index six, whatever you make a, a coin flip effectively. You do that same big old fancy word. You randomly decide whether or not the gene mutates in some way, or, or if the chromosome mutates in some way. And if it does, again, how do you mutate it? Maybe you say that it, it has to be uh, something between the two of them. So it could be three, five, or four. Or in this case, I'm just arbitrarily saying, oh, well, you know what? We're just going to make it up some new random number. Again, it, you're just tweaking things a little bit more so to allow your, your population to potentially break through any local maximas that you're currently operating with. One last thing you can do is build out elites. So an elite child, again, is this idea that, you know, A4, maybe it was the best that we ever got to see. And we want to sort of carry that on as the generations occur. So in that case, you know, one of my children may be a direct copy of whatever that top performer was. Again, these are just methods to help stabilize or control your, your algorithm so you get better results. And so with that in mind, we have pseudocode that we can take a look at. And you'll see that the first little bar, uh, part here is again, just working off of the idea that this could run forever. You know, humans don't have an expiration date. Well, knock on wood, uh, you know, we can just technically run forever. Uh, my point being is this search, this, this giant loop of constantly optimizing our configuration can just run forever or 
if you happen to have some best individual you you hit some threshold you know our our car reaches the end of the window of the map or something is fit enough so you hit some kind of threshold that this is a good enough uh configuration and we move on from there in a prior video i talked about how nasa had built uh used genetic algorithms to uh, build satellites and well again it had hit a point where it was fit enough to be in space pretty uh, fit enough uh, individual. Either way, my point being is at that point, you jump into your new population, right? You start with a completely empty set. It is completely just, or list, you know, set, list, collection, whatever, you know, data term you want to refer to as just empty collection of individuals. We haven't built any yet. So again, how many do we build? You pick. I picked five for you know my slides because that would make it easier for me to convey everything. But you could make 20,000 or two or 20. Again, that all sort of just depends on your little sake. And then this is something I was talking about. How do I select my parents, X and Y? Maybe X is the top performer. Maybe my Y is just some random person. Again, this is just how you decide how to figure them out. So again, it just sort of works that way. Then the next thing is again, this idea of a child is created. Again, how do you make that decision? Well, again, this is where you randomly select random crossover, crossover, point or you establish it again this is just sort of walking through the the grand state of how a genetic algorithm sort of operates so again you create that child then you look at some mutation rate so again this idea that maybe i have a mutation rate of point not 50 we'll say a, a point zero five so a five percent chance of being random uh that should be the other way around. So I'm just going to do this rather than re-record this video. There we go. So if random is less than our mutation rate, congratulations. We mutate the child again. And then finally, uh, you, let me move it. Then you move that child into your new population. Once you've done all of this, then that becomes your new population again. That's you walking through the entire algorithm. You should know uh, who your top performer is and you can keep on going with it. Just to kind of see this in a little action, again, you could take the genetic algorithm and you could apply it to the linear assignment problem that we talked about uh, in our prior video. Uh, one of the things you could also do is you could play around with this. This is now just sort of uh, spitballing what you can do with this approach. Maybe there's some kind of, uh, extra synergy that's going on there so uh you know again red is really good when they work with green and you know we're allowed to have more than one person being in a particular task so suddenly the fitness gets a bonus or uh orange and purple don't work together so if they're working together you have some detriments again that's just an approach that you could work off of same kind of concept can go on there you could say well what happens if uh, M is less than N. So you have, again, now you're only dealing with uh, sort of eight, four genes in your configurations instead of five. And so uh, hopefully, you know, you, you've taken this and you can go, oh, well, I, I, I get now how genetic algorithms work.